Howdy, y'all. The calendar has fallen on June again. Time to shake off all the bitter cold of winter and spring, get our short sleeve clothes out, and prepare for early mornings and late days. It's also the time of the month where folks in the LGBTQ plus community express ourselves and be happy with who we are. In recent years, I've embraced who I am after years of struggling with self-identity. And now that it's the month where the freak flags fly, I'm ready to make a video expressing what this month and loving myself means to me. In my 31 years on this earth, it's surreal being more aware and knowledgeable as an adult and going back on things I grew up with and realizing just how much queerness I was exposed to growing up and me being none the wiser to it. Godzilla movies, my childhood obsession, my own personal guardian, in the Americanized movie Godzilla King of the Monsters, the main star, Raymond Burr, I learned to find out was a gay man. He was also very passionate about what Godzilla stood for, and even convinced the film producers to take the character more seriously when he was invited to reprise his role in Godzilla 1985. It's quite a culture shock when you realize your favorite film franchise since childhood had queer representation. But it doesn't stop there. As a tyke in the late 90s, growing up on Disney Renaissance movies, even the happy wholesome Disney family was home to some queer artists. Andreas Deja, who was known for animating such characters as King Triton, Gaston, Jafar, and Scar, turns out he's gay. He also happens to be one of my favorite Disney animators. And, in a more tragic sense, Howard Ashman, a songwriter who played a big part in the story development of Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and even Aladdin, was a gay man. Unfortunately, he was diagnosed with HIV AIDS in 1988, eventually taking his life in 1991. But his sickness never kept him from his work, and helping to produce some of the most beloved animated films of all time. Another big aspect of my childhood was Batman, with the animated series being my big introduction to the character. So imagine my surprise when I found out Batman's iconic voice, Kevin Conroy, was himself gay. Was quite the appropriate role to play as he too had to live a secret life and hide who he truly was for so long. The gayness in Batman doesn't stop there though. Batman's arch nemesis, the Joker, has gained quite the cult following among queer folk. They point to his infatuation with Batman as evidence of him being queer-coded. But the code goes full exposure in possibly my favorite Batman comic, Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth. I've been waiting to make a video on this comic for a year now. I've been wanting to make a video on this comic for a year now, but I can never get myself to pull the trigger. I don't know how to eloquently describe just how awesome this comic is. It really is too good for words. But a major aspect of it I wanted to bring up was Joker goes full gay in this comic, even grabbing Batman's ass in one panel. And I come to find Joker was originally gonna be even more loud with his homoeroticism, as he was originally gonna be dressed as Madonna, but DC higher-ups had them change it because Jack Nicholson had just played Joker, and they didn't know how that would reflect on him. Uh... I don't think it would have affected him personally, considering he's not a drawing of a comic character. And outside the world of cartoons and movies as a kid, even the shows my dad would share with me had their nuggets of queer rep in them. One of my favorite shows to watch with dad was the Andy Griffith Show. Some of my favorite characters were Barney Fife and Gomer Pyle. Little did I know, and frankly don't think my dad did for that matter, that Gomer's actor, Jim Neighbors, lived a secret gay life for years before finally coming out and living with his husband in Hawaii. Going back on cartoons, everyone knows the meme of people getting their first boner from Bugs Bunny in a dress. It is worth talking about because Bugs really was my introduction to dressing in drag and the whole concept of becoming another gender. Of course, as a kid, I didn't think anything of it because I just saw him as being a silly rabbit. Bunny... hair... Bugs. For me, Doc? Oh, you darling. Mm. Speaking of drag, that wasn't my only exposure to it growing up. Watching Pokemon on weekdays afternoon after school, I took notice of how James of Team Rocket always loved dressing in women's clothes. 
Again, thought nothing of it as a youngster, but as an adult, it hits a lot differently. Especially that one episode that was too hot for American TV. You know, the one. Going back on Disney, the whole movie of Mulan was about a woman going into the army disguised as a man. It's pretty weird how there has been so much drag panic in recent years by religious wackos and right-wing nutjobs. I grew up with all this cross-dressing and fruity characters and I turned out just fine. Mental health issues notwithstanding. You'd think Sailor Moon would have been up my alley as a kid. But, I was being molded to be a stereotypical manly man who doesn't have time for sissy stuff. I watched a real man show, Dragon Ball Z. Sure, all those hot, sweaty, toned muscle men definitely got me excited and had me questioning society's morals, though. Flash forward to now. It's so nice finally seeing more queer characters getting a lot more open representation in movies and cartoons. Especially considering back then, just being gay in a cartoon was enough to get you censored. I talked about shows like The Loud House in the past. Now I want to briefly touch on other cartoons I've been meaning to talk about forever. Craig of the Creek ain't just a cute little nostalgia trip that harkens back to outdoor cartoons like Ed, Ed, and Eddie and Recess. It's casually slipped in some gay and lesbian characters. Just helping to tie into the show's theme that everyone from all backgrounds can come together and get lost in imagination and fun. A show that everybody seemed to sleep on was Netflix's Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts, which sucks. It's an awesome fantasy show with an Avatar and Legend of Korra feel. But it made my jaw drop when a main character, yes, a main character, just flat out came out as gay in a season one episode. Yeah. Just went ahead and said it. None of this dancing around and being coy about it crap. Just flat out admitted it. Know what? Good. That's how it should be. Let's portray it as normal in media as it is normal in real life. Watch Kipo, folks. And of course, the big one, The Owl House. On top of being another fun and whimsical fantasy comedy series that I love having injected into my veins... It also contained probably the best same-sex relationship we've seen in children's cartoons. The main character, Lou, starts a relationship with a bully-turned-girlfriend, Amity Blight. It naturally builds up over the course of the series, ultimately leading to them full-blown kissing in Season 2. I'm happy this wasn't one of those shows that took its sweet time dropping hints, only to make official right when the show was about to end. Nah, man. This show made it official right in Season 1. So, of course, Disney did their dangest to cut it short. The show just had to be coming out right when Gay Panic was making a comeback in the early 2020s. But, but I'm happy they got enough licks in, and overall, I'm super happy and satisfied with how the series turned out. I took a lot of time talking about queerness and media I love to demonstrate my point about why Pride is important. I've seen plenty of people try to undermine Pride by saying it's artificial for us to base our personalities around who we want to have sex with. Which is ironic, considering straight people have had decades of being openly horny and hyper-fixated on how much they love the opposite sex. Even Tex Avery made cartoons satirizing that. Nah, to me, Pride isn't about being openly unapologetic about how gay we are. It's a celebration of the fact, after years of being forced to hide ourselves from society with the risks of being ostracized, we're finally allowed to be open about ourselves without fear of rejection from society. Sure, it's a work in progress. There's still a lot of rights we're working to achieve. A handful of politicians are trying to force us back in the closet. And for some of us, we are still not in a good spot to come out to our families. But, we made it this far. No matter how loud the hatred was, no matter how grim the future appeared, no matter how nasty the threats were from people wanting to stone us to death, we persevered. We reached the point where we could wave our rainbow flags and say, we're here and we're happy to be ourselves. I know I'm blessed to be an adult who doesn't have to hide who I am anymore, because I have the most awesome friends who love me. They don't judge, they don't look down on me, they treat me as a human being. Feels wonderful to finally have that. Looking at all the media I discussed in this video, I love the portrayals of these characters and people. They didn't have to be decked down in rainbow drip or constantly talk about how much they want to bone the same gender. They were allowed to just be themselves. Normal people who just happen to be gay, queer, lesbian, non-binary, trans, and everything in between. Because that's the thing about us queer folk. 
We're normal people just like everyone else. We celebrate who we are, because who we are was enough to cause us to be held down by society. Yes, pride is one of the seven deadly sins, but that's not the kind of pride we're talking about. The pride that's a sin is narcissism, when you love yourself to the point you're the only one that matters in the room. But pride has a different meaning. Another way of loving oneself. No matter how lost or jaded you feel, if you find peace within yourself and are happy with who you are, then that's the first step to making things better for everyone else. That's why pride is important. So here's to another month of heat, rainbows, and overpriced ballpark hot dogs. Whether you're in the LGBTQ plus umbrella, you're a strong ally, or even if you're just a regular person, just know we're all welcome under God's rainbow. We all share this world together, and I think this month is the perfect month for us to lay down our weapons and embrace ourselves as humans. We help each other, take care of each other, love each other. We're all just nomads sitting on this floating rock in space we call home. Let's share it. Hope you all have a lovely June and summer. Keep your heads in the clouds, y'all.